This is Rich Taylor, Miami University, Oxford, Ohio, and the topic of this presentation is degrees of unsaturation, sometimes called index of hydrogen deficiencies. This is a way to begin to get structural information based solely on the molecular formula. Ultimately, what we're approaching here is the resolution of a specific task, that is to take an unknown compound and figure out its structure. We're going to assume that the compound is pure and that the molecular formula can be determined. These are not necessarily trivial tasks, but if the above is true, we can start with that data and move on to using that data in combination with spectroscopy and other chemical analyses to actually get the actual structure of the unknown compound. Purification is not necessarily a trivial task, and in organic laboratory courses, the common methods of purification, namely column chromatography, TLC or GC, or recrystallization or distillation, are one of a variety of ways to uh, zone in on a pure compound. Molecular formula has a historical sense and a more modern way of obtaining. In uh, many years ago, the proper way to get a molecular formula was first to do some kind of elemental analysis, combustion of the compound and measuring the amount of CO2 and H2O given off and all of these t techniques would give you an empirical formula and the molecular weight could be determined by some kind of cryoscopic determination and together the elemental analysis, empirical formula and the molecular weight would give you a molecular formula. Nowadays, typically this process is taken over by mass spectrometry, particularly high resolution mass spectrometry, sometimes incorrectly called exact mass. But if you can observe the molecular ion in mass spectroscopy, you can certainly get the molecular formula directly from that data. If no molecular ion is observable, you have to go to further uh, 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 techniques to get the molecular formula, but once again we're going to assume that we can get there in one way or another and begin to look at degrees of unsaturation. Basically what we're saying is that using the formula alone you can calculate the number of rings and pi bonds in the isomers that have that formula. Any good Lewis structure with that formula will have the same number of degrees of unsaturation. Let's look at that in practice. We'll start by restricting ourselves to saturated hydrocarbons. What you'll notice if you draw enough saturated hydrocarbons, no rings, no double bonds, is that they all have the formula CnH2n plus 2, where n is any integer. And so you can see on this slide that C5H12, C8H18, C11H24, C10H22, all are comprised of structures with no rings and no double bonds. C5H12 has many other isomers, but they will all have in common that they have no rings and no double bonds, and we can say the same for anything that has that formula. Unsaturation in hydrocarbons winds up losing hydrogens. So structures with unsaturation, either because they have a ring or a pi bond, achieve a good Lewis structure when the formula has two fewer hydrogens for each unsaturation. Thus we can say that the degrees of unsaturation is the number of pi bonds or rings in each structure, and for hydrocarbons follows the formula du, degrees of unsaturation, is equal to 2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbons, minus the number of hydrogens, that whole quantity divided by two. If we look at some examples, here are molecules with one unsaturation. C6H12, following the formula, has one unsaturation. You can see that particular structure has a double bond. C8H16, with that formula, either has to have one ring or one double bond. The one I've shown here has one ring. There's a C9H18 with one ring. There's a C10H20 with one pi bond. Altogether though, all of these fit the formula for one unsaturation and you can see the examples of what that unsaturation could be. Two unsaturations is going to be four hydrogens short of unsaturation. So you can see C7H12 with two double bonds, two pi bonds. C8H14, my example there, has one pi bond, one ring. C5H8, the example I've chosen there, has two pi bonds. Notice a triple bond is one sigma, two pi bonds. 
there's a C10 H18 and it's two unsaturations in this example uh, two rings what happens if we have something that isn't a hydrocarbon what happens if something has other atoms in it well if the other atom is a halogen it's going to replace one hydrogen in the formula where there would normally be a hydrogen there's now going to be a halogen each nitrogen since it is trivalent is going to give a opportunity for another hydrogen to come in so adding a nitrogen is going to add one hydrogen to your unsaturation formula oxygens won't affect the formula we can take all of this data for these and other atoms and combine them into a single formula for degrees of unsaturation. So degrees of unsaturation is 2 times the number of tetravalent atoms, typically for organic chemists that means carbon, plus 2 plus the number of trivalent atoms, normally that's going to be nitrogen but it could be phosphorus or other things, minus the number of monovalent atoms, typically hydrogens and the halogens. That whole quantity together divided by two is going to be the degrees of unsaturation. Notice divalent atoms like oxygen and sulfur don't appear because they don't change the number of hydrogens in the saturated formula. Here are some examples then. C6H7OBR, if you calculate that through the formula, it's going to be 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14, minus 8, 7 hydrogens, 1 bromine, that gives you 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3 unsaturations, and you can see a ring and two pi bonds. Notice that it doesn't matter whether it's a carbon-carbon pi bond or a carbon-oxygen pi bond. A pi bond still changes those degrees of unsaturation. C5H11NO2, notice now we have to add 1 for the trivalent nitrogen. gives a degree of unsaturation of 1, and there's a typical formula. C7H5N, degrees of unsaturation is 6, etc. C8H7NO, degrees of unsaturation is 6, and you can get to that unsaturation in a variety of ways. These are single examples. There are many other isomers for each formula, but they're always going to have in common the same number of degrees of unsaturation. Why do we use this as our starting point? Well, one of the first reasons to use this as a starting point is that it is something you can be sure of. If you have the formula, you have certain parameters of your structure that must be there. And whenever you solve a structure, it's very important to start off with something that you're pretty sure is true, rather than take a guess at the beginning. And if that guess happens to be wrong, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. So this is going to help you to elaborate a structure working from unsaturation as the first piece in the puzzle and it's not going to lead you to a blind alley at the very start of things. One thing to make sure though of is that you remember at the very beginning we said it has to be a correct Lewis structure. So let's consider DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, very common compound. If you look at dimethyl sulfoxide in most textbooks you'll see a structure that looks like the one on the left. You'll see that it's C2H6SO and that would give you a degree of unsaturation of zero. But you can see in that structure we have a double bond. What's going on here? Well, what you'll see if you think about that Lewis structure a little more uh, closely is that that's a very deceptive way of drawing the structure of DMSO. The real Lewis structure is the one in the center in which now you can see that if you're going to include that S double bond O, you still have a lone pair on the sulfur. What that means then is that the Lewis structure is not correct. That sulfur is exceeding the octet rule. Since it's not a conforming Lewis structure, it's not going to obey the degree of unsaturation rule. If we actually draw DMSO as a correct Lewis structure, we'll get a structure like the one on the right where you can see that we have no double bonds and everything has a complete octet. Uh, there are three lone pairs and one bond around the oxygen, three bonds and a lone pair on the sulfur. We get formal charges, but everything is a correct Lewis structure and there are ingredients.
That concludes a uh, presentation of degrees of unsaturation. You should now practice that by drawing structures and looking at formulas so that you're sure you have a pretty good grasp of the concept that's something you're going to use again and again as you uh, begin to undertake solving structures.